are you serious? Are you serious? Get some coffee, everybody. Calm down in Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yes, and Montana. They were hit with a very strong jolt, a uh, powerful 4.5 magnitude earthquake recorded in Yellowstone National Park uh, in the evening last night. But it's been followed by several earthquakes, including a 2.7 all the way to 3.1. Uh, here's the whole thing. It's very shallow, very very shallow. Let me give you an update now what's been going on. If you guys remember, two days ago, I noticed that there was a 3.7 or so earthquake in Yellowstone there in Montana. And I said, I don't like it. I don't like it. And there was a couple more smaller aftershocks. I kept saying, I don't like it. I don't like it. Don't let this super volcano open up and awake. Here's what's happened in the last 24 hours. All right. Now, there's been several quakes. Some of them, 4.6 in Indonesia, 4.5 in Fiji. We understand these areas, 4.6 the Philippines, 4.5 Papua New Guinea, 4.2 in Chile, 4.5. This is when it happened. Yellowstone last night, around 6.48 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, here we go. A 4.5 jolt in Yellowstone National Park, followed by a 2.7. Uh, and remember, this 4.5 earthquake that hit Yellowstone in Montana was only 9.4 kilometers deep, followed by a 2.7, then another 2.6, then a 3.1. All of these earthquakes taking place uh, within about a three-minute period. Then the Philippines had a 4.9, and then here goes Yellowstone, 2.9, and then Arkansas, Harrison, Arkansas then must have felt the, uh, the jolt because then Harris, uh, Harrison, Arkansas had a quake of 2.9. Then Washington State, over just not too far from the Yellowstone area, uh, had a 3.6. Uh, then we kept going and kept studying what was going on. Alaska had a couple quakes. We had a 4.2 in El Salvador. And a couple, uh, a 2.9 in Ferndale, California, 3.3 in Ferndale, California, a 4.3 in Argentina, a 4.7 in Papua New Guinea. Alaska had a couple more quakes of 3.6 and 2.7. And then it happened again. Yellowstone, powerful 2.8, again, very shallow. Alaska, with a 2.9, Chile with a 4.4, and then Yellowstone just a few minutes ago, a 2.7. So we continue to see these quakes. They're not slowing down, folks. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, Montana, Yellowstone, Montana is where this quake epicenter is, and the aftershocks continue. And remember, we're dealing here with a super volcano with the potential of an eruption. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but if, and scientists say when it goes, and who knows, that could be what? 100 years from now, 100 days from now, no guarantees on this thing, but it is a massive super volcano that is so large that it would literally destroy the Northwest uh, portion of the United States and part of Southwestern Canada. That would just be from the initial eruption and the, aft and the, uh, uh, the, the, the shock waves and the fire and the brimstone, the smoke and the ash would, would really send uh, the United States and Canada into a dark winter for about three years. Uh, vegetation would start dying. You, yeah, you have to understand, we're talking about a cataclysmic, apocalyptic, nearly extinction of this side of the hemisphere. So this is not nothing to play with. And if you're having a uh, a 4.5 earthquake followed by a lot of aftershocks right there, you got to watch it. And I said this two days ago. Now I'm not a seismologist. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm not a uh, you know a climatologist. I'm, I'm not a uh, cosmetologist. I'm not an uh, ophthalmologist or even a cardiologist. Um, but I am a, a, a I've been watching what's going on. I'll say a country 
preacher in the cornfields of Indiana. I can just tell you, I know what the Bible says. From eschatology's concern, these are the types of events that the Bible spoke of. Great earthquakes. And you have to understand, don't, don't forget Pastor uh, Dr. Katie Collin. Dr. Katie Collin of Harvest Army. He has prophesied of a great earthquake coming upon America. And this is not a man that just blows smoke. And he's had an unbelievable amount of prophecies come true uh, incredibly. All over the world, he has been able to, God has revealed to him earthquakes and different types of things. So we're going to watch very closely. He didn't say when, he didn't say where, but I think we should be aware that we're living in the last days. Now, forget that. If you don't, if you don't believe the science and if you don't believe the prophecies, uh, then take the Bible. And Jesus said in the last days there would be earthquakes in diverse places. All right? Even this, a great shaking in the heavens and on the earth. Now, if you don't believe the Bible and you don't believe the science and you don't believe the prophecies of the prophets like Katie Collins, then I guess it takes sight to clear, to, to completely cure the blind. Give your life to Jesus Christ. That might be too late, though. Give your life to Christ now. We are running out of time. Are you saved? Don't miss today's live broadcast. Starts at 12 noon Eastern. My guest is Rabbi Stephen Ben Danun. Russia? Did Russia kill al Baghdadi of ISIS? We're going to ask Stephen Ben Danun. Is he really dead or is this just another false rumor? And is the United States working with Russia to destroy ISIS? Because it seems ISIS is on the run. And if Baghdadi is dead in Raqqa, which is really the ISIS's unofficial capital, and if ISIS is being run out of Mosul, they're now cornered into one spot. Why couldn't the Obama administration in the three years, first of all, how did ISIS form? Who started the Arab Spring? Why did Obama pull out of Iraq early? How come he left all the weapons and hardware and cash? Why did he strike the deal with the Iranians? How come he smuggled cash into them on that airplane? And how come he couldn't defeat ISIS in the three more years he was president? Trump has been office, in office less than six months, been ridiculed from day one, protested, hated on, trashed by the media, uh, can't find cooperation anywhere. And, and, and yet at, at the end of the day, Within six months, he may have, along with Russia, they may have teamed up to put ISIS in a corner that they can't get out. And maybe the head of the snake's been decapitated, al-Baghdadi. I'll be back with more. We'll talk to Stephen Ben-Nanun when we come back. Are you saved?